Hello everybody and welcome to our virtual open day. My name is Lauren and I'm a recent graduate of the university. I'm going to be your host for the next part of the event. Now we are sad that this is taking place online as a virtual event as we'd love to be meeting you in person but we hope to release the details so that you can come and explore our beautiful campus soon. There's still so much more that you can get involved in though so I'll be joined by some current students and recent graduates who will tell you exactly what it's like to be a student at Worcester. We'll be heading over to speak with the accommodation team as well as the students union officers. You can also join a live course talk and chat with our university advisors. But first, I caught up with Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Provost, Professor Sarah Greer. Hello, and thank you for joining me. Now, we're here at our virtual events rather than welcome people on campus as, as we have done in previous years. Um, so for somebody who hasn't visited us, how would you describe the University of Worcester? Well, I describe it as a really great place to study. So we have about 10,000 students, which I think is a really good size. So we have plenty of interesting activities going on, lots of new people to meet, but we're also small enough so that we can really get to know our students individually and help them to, to really flourish. Um, we offer a wide range of courses. So we're obviously well known, particularly for our health and education, but I would encourage people to look at everything we offer. Um, and also to talk to as many people as they can virtually on this uh, virtual open day. I think three things that we do really, really well at Worcester. Uh, we are great at teaching and we've been externally recognised for our teaching. We offer excellent student support and we know that because our students tell us. Um, and also we really focus on preparing students for the world of work. And then lastly, really, if you do get the opportunity uh, when you're permitted to, to come to Worcester, we have an absolutely lovely campus in a beautiful city. And you might see a little glimpse of that behind me. Now, it's fair to say that it's been quite an unusual year and, um, and we've learned from a year of blended learning during the pandemic. But for students thinking of studying with us in future, what does that mean and what will learning look like? So when we talk about blended learning, we're talking about the blend of teaching which is delivered face to face or virtually, so online, rather as, as we're talking today. And our plans for September, and obviously this depends on what the external circumstances are in September, but we're aiming for a very high proportion of face to face teaching. We think it works really well for our students. I suppose we've learned over the past year that some um, things are perfectly well delivered online. In fact, students say they prefer some of the larger lectures online, for example. So we will be doing that. But we recognise that um, there's a lot to be gained from sitting in a room and talking together. Um, and we've taught during the pandemic, we've actually delivered a, a, a fairly high proportion of our teaching face to face when we can. Um, and that's what we expect to be doing in September. Now, with all the current uncertainty, I, I think lots of people have been thinking about their future career and, and which pathway they should take. Um, and I suppose it brings up the question, why would you go to university right now? Well, that's a that's a big question. I think it's been an incredibly tough year for, for everybody. There's no doubt. But I think we are at the point now where we're really starting to think positively about the future. And in many ways, I think there's never been a better time to go to university. I think university education is all about the future and it, it benefits people in so many ways. So there are the kind of obvious ways you get the opportunity to study something you really enjoy, to look at in, in depth uh, for three years or more. Um, it really helps with job prospects and we work really hard to support our students to get the jobs that they want to get. But I think there are the other things as well. There's something about coming to university that helps you work out what you want to do with your life, which is incredibly important. You've got the space to think about that and to try different experiences and study different things. And then lastly, I think, you know, we can't underestimate the importance of making friends and having fun. Well, thank you very much. And, and thank you for joining me as well. It's lovely to see you, Lauren. And I hope everybody has a great um, virtual open day. 
Uh, so I'm now joined by recent graduate Amy and we're going to be going through some of the questions that we frequently get asked um, about going to university. But first, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so as you said, I'm Amy and I studied marketing, advertising and public relations uh, when I went to Worcester. Um, so I was part of the Worcester Business School. Super. Um, now, a lot of people ask us, what is it like studying on campus? Because I know um, transitioning from school or college or working to university is a little bit different. And what is that environment like? I think that's a great question to ask and it's definitely something that was on my mind before going to university. You might hear um, different terms being thrown around, lectures and seminars and what do they look like. Um, and actually studying on campus um, is a little bit different to what you experience um, at Sixth Form or College. But actually I really enjoyed that learning environment. I had the lectures that meant that I could gain that information that I needed and then you break it down into seminars and that gives students the opportunity to get that hands-on practical experience um, and that's something that I really enjoyed and a lot of students value is it, it takes it to the next level it's not just about sitting in a classroom and learning you get that hands-on approach and actually that that learning approach is really good to be able to study on campus in that way um, but you also get a bit more flexibility when you study on campus um, at university. So for example, where we're sat today um, in the Pearson building, we've got a study area that's open 24 hours a day for students. So that's a little bit different because it gave me much more flexibility when going to university that if I wanted to spend a little bit more time of an evening late at night um, and I wanted to work somewhere outside of where I was living, I had that space to do so. So that's a bit different to studying um, at where you may be now. I really enjoyed studying on campus and you're right it was completely different so um, and it suited me really well so everything is situated closely together so we perhaps have a, um, a, a lecture in a lecture theatre but we'd go away and use um, some of the nice sports facilities for a practical but then join back together in a smaller seminar room to discuss how the, the theory relates to the practical and I really enjoyed that kind of dynamic learning. Um, now, the next question we have is around support at university. For many students, it will be the first time they move away or um, it's that time where, where you gain your independence, really. Um, and some people are unsure about what support is available. So would you mind taking us through, through some of the support for students? Of course, and I think it's really good to say that there is so much support for students. And quite often we talk about going to university has been a big independent step and it certainly was for me but the good thing about it is that actually there was so much support available to me as a student that it felt like I could be independent but in a very safe environment so for example um, at Worcester we've got our first point building um, and that is where all of our support students is for um, students are located so whether that be you've got a an accommodation query or fees and finance or you're thinking about getting yourself a part-time job and you're not really sure where to look for that. Um, all of that av support is available in one central location and as you've just said about everything being quite close together that was great for me as a student and in my second year I wanted to really enhance my employability skills a little bit and find a job that was relevant to my course. So being able to go and approach a team in a central location that could support me with that really helped and that support is there for students whether that be as I say from first point or personal academic tutors and tutors teaching you on your course as well. And both online and offline as well which is, is really nice. Um, now we will be back in just a moment's time um, but first we caught up with some of our students and here's what they had to say. Why did you choose Worcester? I think the minute I came here for the first open day I was I always enjoyed the kind of feel of the place. The lecturers were really nice and I really liked the feel of the course as well. I really liked the feel of um, the university when I came on and for an open day. I liked the fact that everybody is so friendly and welcoming and there was plenty of people to answer questions that I had. I looked at a bunch of universities that had screenwriting specifically as a joint on offer. Um, I applied for five of them and I got into all five and I went to all of the um, applicant open days and things like that and after I went to Worcester's I realised that I was just sort of comparing every other university back to Worcester's open day and I just really liked it. <laughs> How did you find the transition from working to university? Um, I found it quite easy um, because I got that experience of turning up to places on time it needed to be organised, I had all the right equipment with me and I just it was quite easy actually to transition between one to the other. I 
quite like learning so I, I didn't find it that difficult and the uni makes it really easy as well with um, all the activities they do like with the lecturers in Freshers Week and stuff like that it really helps you like get in the swing of things before lectures start which is nice. What were your first few weeks like at Worcester? Uh, really friendly. Um, I made a lot of friends, which I, I, I didn't really expect to. I'm, I'm not a naturally outgoing person, so it was really nice to like meet lots of people. And, and the lecturers are really friendly and like get to know you by name within like the first week. And like it's really, um, it was just a really nice environment to be in. What is your favourite thing about Worcester? So I really like Worcester, the fact that you can actually get about really easy. It's a, it is a city, it does have the things that a city has needs but you can get about really easy it's not too big it's so pretty um it's really like peaceful and like safe to walk around um it's which has been great during the pandemic because i can go for walks and not have to worry about anything it's really nice uh, so we're back with some more questions and i'm still joined um by amy um now the first question we've got this time around is um what opportunities are there available for students there are so many opportunities available for students when going to university and actually at Worcester there's a big emphasis on students gaining practical experience alongside the theory based things that they have to learn. So in between my second and third year um, I had the opportunity to go and do a paid placement in the workplace um, and gain that practical employability experience and a lot of courses incorporate different things so for example some courses have uh, opportunities and placements that you have to do so nursing, teaching and all of those practical courses you have to do so many hours to be able to qualify but there is still an emphasis on those courses that don't, it's not mandatory but to give students the opportunity to gain those different placement opportunities. So whether that be through an internship or whether that be um, an opportunity with a guest lecturer, for example, to come in. And actually this was something that I had on my course a lot. We had people who actually ran their own businesses who came and spoke to us as students and presented us with a range of different opportunities to take forward if we wish to. Should we talk about jobs next um, and whether you need to get a job at university and, and if you do, um, what opportunities are there for jobs in both the university and in the local area? I would say it's a completely personal preference as to whether you get a job. There's not a set thing of you have to or you don't have to get a job. And for me, it was important for me to get a job because I wanted to be able to financially support myself a little bit more. Um, so for my first year, I worked just in the local city centre and there are loads of opportunities for students to do this in shops, in bars, in restaurants, for example. Um, but in my second year, I wanted to do something a little bit more specific to my course. Um, so I approached the um, careers and employability team and they sat down with me and helped me rewrite my CV, helped me gain those in interview skills that maybe I didn't have beforehand. And I actually got a job that was relevant to my course, working in a small marketing firm for roughly 16 hours a week. And I would say it's really important to balance it so you don't want to overwork yourself um, because your studies are the most important thing. There are also opportunities within the university which actually fit really nicely around this. Um, as well, so working as a student ambassador, for example, representing your course, um, having the opportunity to get those practical experience within, the, within your course and touching a little bit about the placement. Sometimes the university will offer part-time part placements that are paid as well and they will be relevant to your course. So there are so many different opportunities. Now, it's a shame we're not on campus today because actually you would be able to meet all of our student ambassadors. Um, very friendly as well. Um, now, the last question for me um, is um, perhaps one of my favourite questions, actually. And it is, what is your favourite thing about Worcester and is it everything that you hoped it would be? My favourite part, there's probably two things. Um, one of them being that everything was so close together. So being a business um, student, I studied on the business school. And that's just over the other side of the river to where we're based today. Um, but it was about 15 minute walk, so everything was so close together um, that I absolutely loved that. And with that came that community feel, which is definitely um, my second favourite um, thing about Worcester. I absolutely loved the fact that I felt part of community right from settling in at university. Everyone knew my name, lecturers uh, you know, know you and they get to know you on a personal level. You walk around the university and you know familiar faces. I never felt that I was ever lost in a crowd.
Well, thank you. Um, now, you can find out more about student supports by chatting to our advisors later on in the event. In the second half of this video, we'll be talking with the accommodation team and also the student union officers. But first, we'll take a quick tour of the St John's campus. Hello, I'm Amy and we are just outside our main reception on the St John's campus. This is right in the centre of the campus and nearby we have First Point, which is home to our student services and support teams. They are here to help with all student queries. We're going to take a walk now through the campus to show you some of the places where our students hang out and study. We have several cafes on this campus and our main dining hall around the corner which is open throughout the day for breakfast, lunch and dinner. There are plenty of great meal deals in most outlets on campus for hot and cold freshly made food. We also offer a click and collect service too so it's great if you're in a rush. We have plenty of outdoor spaces to meet during breaks. This is the perfect spot for bringing your lunch and to get some fresh air in between lectures. It's important to us that you enjoy your downtime during your studies. If you're interested in sports, societies or just getting to know people, the Students' Union can help. The Students' Union is led by three officers who are elected by our students each year so they have everyone's best interests in mind. Let's take a walk through. So now I'm stood upstairs in the hangar, which is where our bar is. Downstairs we have a campus shop, a cafe and plenty of meeting spaces for students. The Students' Union is a really chilled out space to hang out with your fellow students, either in the day or at night. The halls of residence on the St John's campus are only a few minutes away from our teaching spaces. Everything on this campus is really close by, creating a community feel for our students. This is where our biggest selection of halls are, but we do also have plenty of university managed houses in the surrounding area and some accommodation at our city campus. You'll be able to see inside some of our ensuite extra flats later on. I'm now in our student accommodation on the St John's campus and I'm joined by two members of the accommodation team and we are here to have a chat through all things accommodation at Worcester. So my name's Rich, I am a member of the accommodation team here at the university. Uh, I am the residential experience officer uh, for student engagement. So from your first kind of phone calls and emails to accommodation, making inquiries, all the way through your stay with us in your first year, it's probably me you're going to be talking to. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm also part of the accommodation team. I'm the Residential Experience Coordinator, Support and Wellbeing. I support students through open days, applications, moving and throughout the duration of their stay. Perfect. Thank you very much um, again both for joining me. If we can just get straight into the questions then. Um, so Rich, I'll come to you first if that's okay. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about what are student accommodation options at Worcester? So we have a really broad spectrum of accommodation options for incoming students. Uh, we now have six different standards of accommodation based here on our St John's campus, uh, ranging from our traditional halls, kind of your old school uni experience, all the way through to our ensuite premium accommodation, uh, which is very recently opened. It's very all singing, all dancing. Uh, we also have uh, different standards of accommodation based in other locations around Worcester. So we have accommodation on our city campus, which is ideal if you're studying a course, especially somewhere based like the business school or the law school. Uh, we also have a really nice portfolio of privately owned but university managed accommodation, HMOs in the local area, most of which are probably a five to 10 minute walk away from either St John's or city campus. Brilliant, that sounds fantastic, thank you for that. And Sam, if I can come over to you with our next question, if that's okay. When should applicants think about applying? As soon as students have been accepted to Worcester as their firm choice via UCAS, they can apply for accommodation and they can apply all the way up to the 31st of May as long as they've been accepted onto their course by the 1st of May. However, if the students can't meet that deadline, they can apply after this date and we should be able to accommodate them. Perfect. And Rich, 
Um, how do you actually go about making that application? So once you meet the criteria that Sam was discussing, you will receive an email from the university's admissions team um, giving you a link to our accommodation application website uh, and also some really helpful instructions on how to submit your application. Um, it's super straightforward, really, really intuitive. It's a case of creating an account online, uh, filling in your accommodation options and sending that across to us. Really, really straightforward and takes no more than about 10, 15 minutes. Brilliant. If we think about costs of going to university um, and the cost of accommodation, what is included? Do you get things like Wi-Fi? Are your bills included? Are there any additional costs that students are expected to pay for? So the rent prices um, per week and they are inclusive of all bills, Wi-Fi in each of the bedrooms because we know that's really important for students. Um, gym membership to both of our gyms, um, one at City Campus, one on St John's Campus, contents insurance as well. Um, and then in our ensuite extra and ensuite premium halls, it's inclusive of TV licence as well. Perfect, thank you. Um, and in terms of going away and living away in accommodation, some students may think about you know, can I choose who I live with or who will I be living in accommodation with? Will it be people on my course? How, how does that work at Worcester? So if you're joining us and are potentially thinking about coming with a friend or somebody you know from back home, uh, you can include that information on your application form. Uh, you can request to live with friends. So if you know somebody who's coming with you and you want, are interested in staying with them, you can absolutely request to do that. Uh, if you're joining us and studying one of our vocational courses like nursing and midwifery, it's more than likely you'll be living with other people from your course due to kind of the nature of your hours of study, being away on placements. It's nice to have people kind of in the same situation as yourself. Otherwise, you know, we like to, you know, you're going to be going away and meeting new people. So you're going to be living with people, studying on kind of other courses from different backgrounds. It's a really, really exciting time and a great opportunity to meet people from other courses you might not normally associate with. Brilliant, thank you. And I think that's really good to cover because it can be a worry for students moving away. So um, it's really great. Thank you for that one. And I'm sure there are going to be a lot of students thinking about visiting universities in person at the moment and um, we're virtual today. Um, but will there be an opportunity for students to visit accommodation soon? We're really looking forward to welcoming visitors back onto campus and showing them around the accommodation. Um, and that will be happening as soon as it is safe to do so. So I would just ask everybody to check the websites and we will have some events coming soon. A big thank you to Rich and Sam for talking us through accommodation there. Now you can actually catch up with the accommodation team later on in the event and have a conversation with them um, about your options. I'll be heading over to the Student Union in a moment to talk with the Student Union officers, but for now we continue our tour of the St John's campus. Welcome back to the campus tour and this time I'm back in main reception but we're going to take a walk in the opposite direction. This is the Edward Elgar building and is where most of the teaching spaces are on this campus. We have plenty of large lecture theatres and seminar rooms to cater for a variety of different class sizes. So I'm now here in the university's Geo Garden. This is a great place to come and sit outside, grab lunch and also meet your friends. There's plenty to see around here, including a 350 million year old fossil feature. It is also used by our School of Science and the Environment students. So behind me here, we have the Charles Darwin building, which is where some of our specialist science labs are based. This is also where the National Pollen Forecast is produced in partnership with the Met Office. This is the Sheila Scott building, also known as our Clinical Skills and Simulation Centre, which is used by courses such as nursing, midwifery, paramedic science, physiotherapy and occupational therapy. Rooms are designed to replicate hospital, therapy and home environments for training that reflects real life. The centre provides state-of-the-art simulation opportunities for students through a range of real-life simulations to allow them to practice clinical decision-making and leadership skills. We have a fully equipped ambulance to teach paramedics crucial skills while stationary and on the move. We also have Simman, 
an electronic man with over 2,500 irregular heartbeats and can suffer from thousands of ailments, perfect for testing quick decision-making skills. So that brings us to the end of our tour around our St John's campus, but join us back a little bit later in the session for a tour of our city campus. joining me all. Uh, firstly, I thought it'd just be good if you could introduce yourself, if that's okay. So Meg, if we go to you first. Yeah. Um, so my name's Meg. I am the Student Union President. So I was a student studying the SC Sport and Exercise Science. Um, and now I represent students having been voted in by them on stuff like sustainability, welfare and inclusivity, including our student networks. Perfect. Yeah, I'm uh, Tish. I'm the Vice President of Student Activities, so I kind of look after sports, societies, RAG and volunteering. Um, again, I did Creative Digital Media as my degree um, and then was elected in, uh, by students last year to represent them. Great, yeah, so I'm Harry, so I'm the Vice President of Education, so I was studying uh, Special Educational Needs, Disability and Inclusion, um, so SENDI for short, um, and as part of my Vice President role I look at education, sort of representing students, um, but also overseeing the academic representation system, so making sure it's sort of course reps and school reps are representing their peers, um, yeah. Should we talk about those first few weeks of going to university? Because I, I remember it really clearly, I was really nervous and I imagine there's lots of people who are also wondering what it's going to be like in those first few weeks. Could you tell us a little bit more about Welcome Week? Yeah, so <laughs> I'll take this one. Um, yeah, Welcome Week is kind of a week dedicated to students settling in, meeting new people. It's quite scary coming to university. Um, I know I was put in student house rather than halls. Um, so meeting those people and kind of breaking the ice down. So uh, last um, year in September, we held a Welcome Weekend uh, where you could come along, meet sports and societies and networks, meet the SU. It was all socially distanced outside. Obviously, we're not too sure how this September will look, but um, we are hoping to do it outside again down at City Campus. We had food on offer, the bar was down there, um, and there's really great events throughout the week as well, like uh, we did golf and bingo. Um, it's a really fun, really great way of kind of getting an icebreaker. I don't know if you guys want to add more to that. <laughs> yeah, and just to say that everyone's experience isn't necessarily the same. Um, so I have my um, welcome week in halls. Um, and had a fantastic time and got involved with everything that the SU had to offer. Um, but also we recognised that there's lots of different types of students as well um, and that lots of our events we're planning to make as inclusive as possible, including stuff like for mature students or people with kids and stuff like that. Um, so there'll be more information coming out about Welcome Weekend closer to the time. Yeah, I think just a key thing to remember as well is like all students are new when you come to Welcome Weekend. So it's that idea of like, get involved in everything that's there and there's so much going on, that's what I found anyway, that you sort of come here, you move into halls, you've got all these people in your halls to meet and then it's like, oh, there's this event, this event, this event, like, and I think just get stuck into as much as you can. Um, that's what I did anyway and then you sort of, but yeah, putting yourself out there as well and going, everyone's new, so everyone's just as keen to chat as each other. 
The Students' Union offers so much for, for students to get involved in, support. Um, what can students get involved in and, and what sort of events can they look forward to throughout the, their time as students here? Tish, do you want to start with the fun stuff? Yeah, <laughs> mine's the fun job. Um, yeah, so there's loads of sports and societies to get involved with. Um, but alongside that, we have our hangar bar. Um, so we wrote, um, run loads of events in there. It's not just to have to be around alcohol. If you don't drink, then that is completely fine. Uh, so we do bingo nights. My mind's gone completely blank on all the events <laughs> we do. Karaoke. <laughs> Karaoke, yeah. Um, we have the pool tables here as well, um, and yeah, I'll let you guys add as well. Yeah, and there's, they do so much stuff as well, like sports and societies, don't they, throughout the year. So this year, they've done loads of things on like online, doing different, like, as you said, sort of those bingo nights, those quizzes and stuff like that. Um, and then in a regular year, it's sort of that stuff on campus, like charity runs, and the colour run was a big thing, wasn't it, a couple of years ago. Um, on sort of my side of things as well, so as we... PE, obviously, as I said, there's stuff in the academic representation, so getting, getting involved in course reps, um, feeding back on your course and actually being really part of that experience um, and shaping change on, in the university. Like, I always say to people on applicant day that actually at university you can change things and that's what's really important. It's not like in previous settings that people find, they find like it seems quite tokenistic, you sort of have that pass on your feedback. Whereas at uni, you really can make a change, and that's what's really great about it, I think. Um, do you want to talk about the networks? <laughs> yeah, um, and just to say that there's lots of events on throughout the year with stuff like Go Green Week, so celebrating like sustainability and learning about stuff like that. Um, but we also celebrate loads of cultural events as well. Um, before COVID, we had an amazing um, Diwali celebration. Um, and the most important thing, really, is that we're led by students, and that if you have ideas of activities that you want to get involved with, whether it's starting a new club or society, or even just an event that you want us to run, come and talk to the officers because we're here to kind of represent you and to put stuff on to help you make friends with other people. So, yeah. So you mentioned um, sports and societies there. This is a really big thing um, for students coming to university. I was part of the Netball Society, had the best time. It was, it was so much fun. But it's not just sports and uh, there's so much you can get involved in. So could you tell us, sorry, this is going to be lots of questions in one. So <laughs> what can you get involved in? Are there, there's sports, there's societies and how can you get involved? Yeah, so we have over 40 sports clubs and societies. Um, you can find a full list on our website, walkeshu.com. Um, click which one you're more interested in or you can get involved with more than one um, I know lots of students love to in immerse themselves in that first year and just get involved as much as they can um, so we with the societies they range from you can have academic societies so groups that will support you we have nursing paramedics and um, then you kind of have the more general interest so a musical theatre society um, and then also um, faith um, and cultural societies like the Finnish society um, with sports clubs Again, we've got so many of those to get involved with. They compete in Bucks. We have Varsity every year, which we compete um, against Gloucester in. Um, so there's really lots to get involved with. Um, their prices range, um, which you can find all of them on the website. And if we don't do the right society or sport club for you, all you need is four students and you can set up your own sports society with the help of us at the Students' Union. Um, and then we have the networks as well, which I'll let Meg talk about, which is a really great opportunity. Yeah, so we also have um, 10 networks. So they're student groups that are representative of a certain demographic of student body. So we have stuff like the Mature Parents and Carers Network, the LGBTQ Plus Network, and the Disabled Students Network, as well as lots of other ones. Um, you can find out more about that on our website, but they're free to join and they're a really good opportunity to meet other people that are in similar positions as you. Um, it's been really helpful this year and it's something that we're really looking forward to getting people involved with next year as well. Now, going to university, uh, a lot of people will be moving away for the first time um, and there's, we always get lots of questions about what support is available. Could you tell me a bit more about how the Students' Union supports students? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we do loads of different things. I think the key thing is you're supported throughout your journey there. Um, so the first example that comes to mind is sort of the help and advice service that we have. Um, so Kate sits in Help and Advice and does an absolutely incredible job um, of making sure that students are supported with sort of every aspect and can go to her for that independent and sort of impartial advice. And she covers a whole range of things, as I said, from sort of the academic experience to housing, 
to wellbeing um, and can either support you sort of in those meetings or actually signpost to the relevant services. Um, obviously, as I've touched on already, the academic representation, supporting students, making sure they have a voice on their course. Um, I think that's really important in terms of settling, settling in as well, because your cohort, I think, within on your course is actually a really big part of the community that you feel, because um, it's almost that first community that you're thrown into. Now, if I could ask uh, you all one question, um, this is for applicants specifically. If you had one tip for anybody starting this September, what would it be? I think mine would be just get involved um, with obviously with whatever feels comfortable to your level, but get involved with sports, societies, networks, put yourself out there. Um, I think I speak on behalf of us all. We all joined a sport club or a society and we wouldn't have found our love for Worcester and love for the Students' Union if it wasn't without that. And you meet some of your best friends um, that stay in your lives forever. So, yeah, get involved with anything that sounds appealing for you. Just jump right in and do it. Um, don't, don't hold back. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think as well, talk to people. So like whether you've got family and friends that went to university, whether you can get, so say if you really like one sport, actually having a look on Facebook and having a look on our website and seeing who's sort of on the committee of those sports societies and having a chat to them um, and just getting a sense of like, what is Worcester like? Why do people love it? Why do people come here? Um, and again, speak to us as well. <laughs> um, come and speak to like your officers. We're on social media and you can email us as well. Just thinking about what Tish said about trying something new is that actually in my first year, I tried ultimate frisbee <laughs> and I'm, I, I met my best friend. I had the best time and I thought this is fantastic and an experience I'd never had before I was at uni, if I wasn't at uni. Thank you. That was great. That's all. That's all the questions. I went <laughs> <laughs> It was great to catch up with the Students' Union team there. Uh, to round off our tour of the university, we'll be joining business student Debbie as she takes us on a tour of the city campus. Hi, I'm Debbie and this is our city campus and home to Worcester Business School. This building used to be an infirmary dating back to 1771, but it's been modernised inside to be a great space to study and catch up with our friends. The city campus is a 20 minute walk from the St John's campus and about 10 minutes away from the Riverside campus, home to Worcester Arena. And we're only a few minutes away from the city centre. Here is the cafe at the city campus where we hang out between lectures and watch the day's news. Downstairs there is a gym and wellbeing centre and there's also a museum here about the history of the building. This is a typical learning space where business school students have seminars. The Jenny Lynn building is around the corner which is another teaching facility at the city campus and is home to our school of law including a purpose-built courtroom. We have halls of residence at the St John's campus and at City campus. This is one of our ensuite extra flats at City, which is really handy for students who study on this campus or for those who want to be close to the city centre. A couple of minutes walk from City campus is our award-winning library, The Hive. We have over a quarter of a million books here, as well as over 250 computers and access to printers, Wi-Fi and laptop points. The Hive offers an excellent space to study with some fantastic views of Worcester. So that's all from us now. Hopefully that answered some of your questions. Now there's so much more that you can get involved in. From here, you can join a live course session and hear more from the lecturers and current students on your course. And you can also chat with our university advisors and get your questions answered. Now, of course, we hope to welcome you to campus soon and we will be releasing the dates of that shortly to invite you um, to come and tour our campuses. Um, but for now, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.